Hello everybody, this is Tim once again. I recently watched Stephen King's The Night Flyer based off the short story, also titled The Night Flyer. So uh, I'm not going to compare the film to the short story. I'm going to judge it on its own merits since I do any film based off any other medium. But anyway, to jump right into the film, the film stars Miguel Ferrer as a, a journalist you know, working at a place called Inside View. They publish like all the sleazy stories like uh, people who claim that they're, they were raped by the devil and um, they either abducted by aliens and shit like that. But anyway, <coughs> to jump right into this film here, there's this uh, vampire who fly who flies an airplane. He heads from like local town to local town, feeding off the local yokels, basically. Um, Miguel Ferrer's character's name is Richard Dees. He gets the story from uh, his boss. He passed science, says it's a bunch of shit. Uh, there's a new journalist there who's a female. Uh, named Catherine, but Miguel Ferrer keeps calling her Jimmy after Jimmy Olsen, obviously. So I'm going to call her Jimmy, too, uh, for the sake of the review. But anyway, so uh, she gets the same story. She takes the story. Miguel Ferrer passes on the story. Miguel Ferrer's character is a plum asshole in this film, but he plays an asshole so well, I would <laughs> say he's a lovable asshole. He plays a prick, but like I say, a lovable prick, but he does it fantastically. He's just a joy to watch because the guy is just such a douchebag. And he just cusses like every five seconds and fucking uh, <laughs> the Jimmy wants to know what it's like to be a journalist or if he has any inside tips. She asks him about it. He says, well, he basically says, lie, publish what you don't believe and never believe what you publish. So basically he says, write bullshit and don't believe bullshit. And he tells her the story of uh, the woman who used to work there before her. Uh, who let the stories get crept up in her head and like a fucking cancer as he puts it and got too consumed by him and she ended up committing suicide but he said it made for a great headline <laughs> so <laughs> basically I guess he's been on he's been working here for so long doing all these fucking crazy ass stories that he's became well an asshole who just has lost his humanity basically uh, so she gets the night flyer story then the next day he comes in um uh, the boss tell his boss tells him about that she's got the night flyer story, but that the fucker is struck again after he passed on the story, saying that the night flyer would get caught. Uh, well, they don't call him the night flyer; they call him Renfield, which is uh, the name of a uh, one of the actors from Dracula. So I guess the vampire's a movie fan, like as they say in the film. <coughs> Sorry, but anyway, uh, in the film, uh, I mean, well, back to the fucking story. Um, so he decides he wants the story now. He wants to go after him. He gives the, the new name the Night Flyer. He basically comes up with it on his own. So they decide to run with that name. So he wants the story now. They call Jimmy in there. They say, fuck you. This story is no longer yours. Give it to Miguel Ferrer or Richard Hees. Um, and he's like, and she's like, do you want my ticket too? And he says, no, I got my own plane. And she takes the ticket, throws it up in the air. I like this scene transition. It's done good. Uh, and then you go into the scene, uh, the next scene of him flying through the air. The scene's kind of like a fade in of him flying through the air from the ticket where it's ripped up, falling to the ground. But I like it. It's a good uh, scene transition. But yeah, she was pissed. It was her story. She got fucked over. I don't blame her for being pissed. <laughs> And so now he's taking on the story. He goes to the uh, the town where one of the murders happened. He's uh, tracing all the murders from beginning to end. He talks to a local yokel there. Uh, he tells him basically the story that uh, this Renfield guy came in. The vampire wears like a really tacky fucking uh, Dracula cape, like a Halloween outfit. Why, I don't know. He never explains it. I guess since he's a movie fan, he just thinks it's cool. But anyway... <laughs> He uh, tells him a story that the vampire arrived into town, came there, and his friend Claire Boy, I think is how you say his name, uh, was there working the night shift, basically. And so the vampire comes in there, and then the next day, the, the old man says that uh, he came over and talked to him, and he was like washing the vampire's plane, and it kind of seems like he's in a trance, but I guess the vampire puts people in trances in this movie, but they never really explain it. Oh, before I forget, at the beginning of the movie... There, the opening of the film, there's a vampire kill scene where this guy comes out in the middle of the night, and because this, uh, the the plane, the drive, the plane, the guy who's flying it fucking won't respond, and he comes out there in the middle of the night to tell the guy to move his ass, and instead the vampire like knocks his brains out with the side of the plane door and then slashes his face. It's a good death scene. Um, it happens rather quick though, 
but it's good, decent suspense. But anyway, back to the middle of the story here. So he tells him the st uh, he tells him the story, and uh, the old man tells him that he was talking to him, and he was kind of like talking back, like he was in a trance, and he wasn't responding nor normally. And he was telling him that man, that Redfield was sure a good fella. <laughs> Basically, almost exactly like that. <laughs> Like he's in a trance, and he's washing his plane, and then the old man says before he forgets, there was a big fucking pile of dirt underneath the plane, because in some legends, vampires have to, like, sleep in soil or whatever. Um, so he tells him that story, and then the, they skip to the next part, and uh, that uh, Claire boy was found with his fucking throat ripped out, and you see the scene. There's not a lot of violence in this movie, like, death-wise, but you see a lot of the aftermath, and it's pretty graphic. This film relies more on suspense and creep factor. But... I mean, it plays it well. And so after that, he heads to the next town to uh, try to get more information, of course. And the next town is the one where he, he goes into the morgue and just takes pictures of this guy's dead corpse. And he doesn't, like, try to do it in a nice way or anything. He just fucking pulls the sheet off and takes pictures of his entire body, his entire dead body. The whole thing and all. The whole enchilada, as they would say. And meanwhile, Jimmy is researching the case anyway. And, um... Uh, the boss, the guy who runs the place, he's a dick. He kind of overplays it. There's a scene where he laughs like maniacally at the camera for like an hour or for like a couple minutes. And it's just really cheesy and overplayed. That's one of the things I didn't like. And another thing I didn't like in this film is you see the boom mic for a second, which isn't too big a deal. But <laughs> it's just a little annoying. But anyway, back to the story. Jimmy's uh, investigating the case too. And he's okay with it. And he basically puts them as competitors against each other. She's starting to become more like Richard. Uh, her character is in the film as she evolves. She's bribing people and shit too, trying to get information just like him. So he takes pictures of the guy's corpse. Um, oh, before I forget again, uh, before that, he's visiting Claire Boy's grave. Uh, he fucking like <laughs> messes up his tombstone and takes other flowers from other people's graves, throws it on there. This is just so, this is fucking hilarious. It's just to show us how big of an asshole this guy is. He like even kicks the tombstone to make it look crooked so it look creepier for the photos. But then you get like a really silly like a cliche scene where the fucking caretaker shows up and he's like long hair and looks like a, a hillbilly basically I guess with a look <laughs> or generic hillbilly he tells him to get the fuck out of there and there's something there's like a, a weird thing in this film where he, when he touches the grave he puts he cuts himself and puts blood on it so he can make it even look more spooky and he somehow like connects him with the vampire and he sees like visions of him and kills and stuff he does they never explain it in the film I don't know what the fuck that means but whatever, that's another one of the weak points in the film. This film just doesn't explain enough. This film, like, begs for a sequel that never happened. <laughs> but anyway, so he had, like I said, back to what I was talking about. He takes pictures of the morgue, and then just to, uh, you get another kill where this old lady's, like, sitting outside her house. Uh, the vampire's plane is parked there, and she sees uh, this old man getting murdered. She kind of acts like she's in a trance, but she's, like, really ecstatic and happy. <laughs> The, this old man's getting murdered, it's her husband, he gets killed, and then the vampire walks in and just kills her off screen, and it's a decent scene, you see some blood and stuff, like I said, this film's not overly gory, it relies more on suspense and creep factor. Um, she gets killed off screen, but she seems ecstatic about it. Um, next scene, you basically get um, Richard D's uh, Miguel Ferrer having a nightmare about the vampire in his hotel room. It's kind of a neat little scare. Nothing to write home about. The vampire keeps... Uh, well, he wakes up. The vampire's wrote on his window in blood. I guess it's blood. Uh, fuck off, basically. He keeps sending messages to the movie telling him just to get the hell out of there and not bother him. But, of course, him being an asshole, he doesn't take these messages serious and just keeps coming. Um, he lets the story of what the... He lets the vampire and what it's doing consume him more and more. And to the point where he's so wrapped up in it, he just will not stop. Um... So after that, he's heading um, to try to, to try to track down the vampire. And he go well. He goes the well. Not well. He's tracking the vampire, but he's really like tracing every one of his murders and everything too. So he heads to the next town to uh, read up the murder on the old man uh, and his wife. He heads there and uh, he's talking to this woman in the beauty salon. Well, at first he talks to this guy at the gas station. He tells him that he's seen him that morning and. She was real spruced up and had her hair fixed and everything. She looked really good for an older woman who's got to be in her like late 60s or mid 60s or whatever. Um, and but the guy looked like he was in a trance, like he was pale and drained of blood and in a fucking trance. 
They never explain like the trance shit in here, but I just assume that the vampire just can put people into trances because vampires tend to do that in, in folklore. But anyway, or vampire mythology. Uh, so he, then he heads to a beauty salon where the old lady got it, gets her hair spruced up like every couple months or weeks or whatever. And the, the, the woman there, the beautician, tells him that she came there and was really ecstatic because they had a, a friend came to visit. And it, the way she was ecstatic about it made it seem like he was an old acquaintance. Uh, and she wanted her hair to look especially good that day and wanted her to look especially good that day. So then he goes and heads to the old lady's house. And this movie relies more on suspense and the in-between stuff in it isn't as strong as well the final and uh the creep factor of the kills and the, the vampire like just himself um you know like i was saying it's the in-between stuff in it is good like for the scares you get like this random dog that pops up i don't know why it tries to attack him chase after him i don't know why it's there it doesn't really serve much of a purpose it's a decent little scene but doesn't amount to much of anything he uh he gets away from the dog he says fuck you dog i'm out of here makes it to his vehicle hits the road before well first he takes a bunch of pictures in the, the trailer and look before that the cops were telling him about how the incident looked when they went in there and the, the old man's head was like fucking laying on a desk <laughs> and the old woman was like really peaceful looking laying on the bed like she was at peace basically that she wanted to die i guess or at least she was happy to be killed uh, so he makes it to his vehicle, gets away from the fucking annoying dog, heads out of there, um, and then runs into Jimmy, who happens to be there. Uh, he tells her basically that uh, if it comes down to me and you with this story, they're going to choose me over you any day, sister. <laughs> basically. And uh, she's, uh, to beat it all, she gives in and he's like, come on, you help me out on this, I'll share my, my headline with you or byline or whatever. And she's like, okay. <laughs> trust in this dickwad and so she starts trusting him and they try to find out where this fucker is going to strike next um and they narrow it down to one certain spot they get ready to head out there she goes to pack her stuff uh, she comes back of course he's got all his shit already packed and he fucking wraps her up in a blanket or a shower curtain one and throws her in the closet and locks her in takes all her shit and splits and heads by herself what a dick <laughs> he plays it fantastically there's one other scene in the movie that was earlier than that, right before that, that I really don't think they needed, but it's there anyway just to show how much of a dick Miguel Ferrer is, but we already know he's a major dick. We don't really need this scene. It kind of seems like padding. He runs into a uh, like a wreck randomly in the road and starts like moving the bodies to certain positions that look better for his pictures. And once again, it's there just to show him that, just to show us as the audience what a fucking douchebag this guy is. And it works, but it still feels like padding because... By then, we've got enough scenes to know this guy's an asshole. But anyway, so he locks her up in there, takes all her shit, and she tells him not, uh, that the story has consumed him. Uh, but he, he doesn't give a fuck. He goes anyway because he is consumed. It's too late. He heads out to the, where the vampire is. He goes there to the, I believe it's an airport. Uh, everybody there is fucking mutilated beyond recognition. He finds the vampire's plane, looks in it, finds his photo album. You get a little insight into the vampire. You get pictures of what is obviously the old woman when she was younger, and that maybe him and the maybe her and the vampire were like an item back in the day. But if that's the case, I don't understand why he killed her. I mean, I don't really get that. But and like I said, they don't, well, like I'm saying now, they don't explain enough about the fucking vampire's history in this film. It leaves you hanging a lot. Well, no, like I've said before, they don't explain a whole lot about the vampire's history in this film. Like, um, they just leave so much blank. This film just feels like it was begging for a sequel that just never happened. Uh, but that's pretty much as much information as we get. He goes in there into the airport. Everybody's fucking mutilated beyond recognition. Everybody's dead. Even like the little girl and her teddy bear, she's laying there like dead and mutilated. Um, you don't get a lot of gore in this film, but seeing the aftermath of all these dead corpses there, I mean, there's a fuckload of dead corpses there. And especially the little girl is pretty horrific and definitely amps this film up. So he's like had enough of this shit. He's finally gonna leave. Slips on some blood, falls down, heads to the bathroom. I guess to freshen up before he leaves. But if that was been me, I wouldn't give a fuck how much blood I had on me. I got the fuck out of there because that'd been just too intense for me. But not Miguel Ferrer. <laughs> he goes in the bathroom to freshen up. Uh, he's wiping off the blood and shit. The vampire comes in. You get kind of a stupid ass scene where the vampire takes a piss and blood comes out. He's like pissing blood. I don't really think he needed that. I mean, it's interesting, but 
kind of feels, kind of brings the movie up to, I mean, brings it down to have a B movie level. I mean, this is essentially a B movie, but uh, that kind of makes it more like a goofy B movie, I think. I mean, you just don't really need that. kind of cheesy. Um, but then the vampire walks over there. He tells him to give him his film, but that he's not going to kill him because he lusts after death and carnage, basically just as much as the vampire does. He tells him to give him his film so he can destroy it, but I don't know why, because all he's done is took pictures of the dead bodies and shit, which, uh, which the fucking press after this is going to do anyway, so I don't really see what the point is in destroying his film. It's kind of useless. So he destroys his film, uh, lets him go. Off to the movie, you don't see the vampire's face, and Miguel Ferrer is basically free. He can just leave, because the vampire is evidently a fan of his work. He even reads his magazines, I mean, reads his articles that he writes, which, uh, Miguel Ferrer finds his, finds the, <laughs> sees his articles, I mean, in the fucking plane that the vampire flies, where he's been reading them before he goes into the airport. But anyway, he comes to the, he comes out of the bathroom and says, I want to see your face. And the vampire's, uh, the vampire's like, uh, I believe he was, uh, well, no, he just fucking turns around and he's like, I suppose this was inevitable. And I can't believe that he'd still want to see his face after all this shit. This motherfucker must be hugely curious. <laughs> But I guess it works for his character. He just can't stop. Um, <laughs> even though enough is enough. But he wants to see his face. He turns around. He shows him his face. It fucking like, it looks like more like an actual bat than a person. Which the vampire design in this I really like. This is a unique vampire look. He looks more like an actual bat. You get a little CGI. His mouth like extends. Uh, like, like that. F further down you get a little CGI. But it's not annoying or anything. It complements it. And... Um, his face, I mean, the face of the vampire in this movie is, like, really horrific and pretty fucking intense. And, uh, he grabs Miguel Ferrer and, like, he, the vampire cuts his own wrist and lets Miguel Ferrer drink some of his blood. And it causes, uh, he tells him that he's gonna let him see, like, a taste of hell or, <laughs> or whatever. Or a vision of hell or what hell looks like. Why, I don't know. I mean, just a few seconds before, he was gonna let him go and just say, fuck this shit. I guess because he was more curious, he, he wouldn't stop being curious, he decided to just take him out, but... Or punish him for it. But whatever. Uh, the next scene we get is entertaining enough to make up for it. Uh, he's like having this big hallucination. It's in black and white. And all the corpses get up. And they're like vampires. And he fucking <laughs> starts running from them. And there's like creepy shit. It's like his own personal hell. One of the corpses is a woman. And she's like got a dead baby in her arms. And says you know what I had to do to get this. Richard I had to pull it out of me. <laughs> it's pretty fucking creepy. And then you get a scene where uh, this uh, woman who used to be a journalist that he knew, she's dead. She killed herself by putting a plastic bag on herself during a bath. Her head explodes with the plastic bag on it. She says she's George. She looks at him and says she's drowning. And then it, uh, the bag fills up with blood and her head explodes. A little bit too theatrical for a more somber, uh, creepy scene like this, but it's okay. And then you get this guy coming in front of him saying, look this way, Richard. And his fucking eyes are flashing like a camera. Like, Miguel Ferrer has been taking pictures of people all through the movie, so it's like his payback. And he like, Miguel Ferrer punches him in the face. It's pretty funny. And then this uh, guy walks up to him, grabs a hold of him, says, I'll be your friend. Let me be your friend. It's pretty creepy and pretty funny at the same time. He So he runs over and gets an axe and just starts fucking chopping the shit out of everybody. And the movie kind of ends in a cliche. The police show up and obviously think he's the killer. It's pretty obvious that the scene's leading this way. They gun him down. That's pretty big cliche. But there's not really any way the story can end. Once that happened, I mean, there's not really any way that this story can end. Because this guy's a dick, and it's kind of like, this story is more, or this film is more of a um, story of, like, human character and this guy's character than it is the vampire. The vampire is pretty much just, like, the catalyst of exploring Miguel Ferrer's character. And it works for that. And there's really not too many ways the story can end. Uh, so he gets gunned down. Obviously, he gets blamed for the murders. Uh, then Jimmy shows up just there to, in time to take some press pictures. And um, she's pretty much, she's now transformed and became Miguel Ferrer's character. Now she is him. Uh, her character has evolved from a reporter that wanted to do good into him. Uh, because of all the shit she's been through, she's decided to just play it dirty and be an asshole just like him. And plus what he said, never publish what you believe, uh, never believe what you publish and never publish what you believe. So she does, she looks out the window and sees the, the vampire, the real killer leaving and decides to publish a story of him doing it uh, just so she can be top dog <laughs> at the, uh, her journal, her story can be the number one, I guess. So she did, she, she transforms into his character. She becomes an asshole.
and you get a weird scene when the vampire's leaving and it shows his human face and he he looks kind of actually sad about what's been happening and what's going on he like spits part of the he spits the blood out to her in the rain and it's interesting and he takes off and flies away like i said you don't get enough insight into the vampire and it kind of plays him a little sympathetic right there at that last second like he doesn't want to do this shit but i would like more information on that this film needs a sequel but anyway after that she looks at a they ask the police ask who's this guy and she says it's richard Dees. we call him the night flyer typical ending um and that's pretty much end of the end of the movie and it focuses in on her uh, pay, uh, on the paper and her stories on the front cover. I mean, it focuses in on the inside view uh, paper that they released and her stories on the front cover. So she's became Richard Dees, and that's the character arc. Uh, for this film, I would give it three stars out of a possible four. It's a good movie. It's not a great movie. It leaves too much unanswered with the vampire. And it's got a couple little cliche shots, and the middle kind of muddles a little and drags a little bit. But... It's all for acting wise, the guy who plays the vampire does fine. The makeup effects on him, they look great. He looks like a fucking actual bat. <laughs> he looks he looks awesome. His teeth, he's got like gigantic sharp razor teeth, not little fangs, not too little ones like that. And it looks pretty damn intense and cool. Miguel Ferrari he plays an asshole, terrific. I like Miguel Ferrari. He was great in Robocop as another asshole. <laughs> And uh the girl who plays Jimmy or Catherine, she's she's cute, she does fine, she's likable. Um, and her character arc to becoming uh, basically Miguel Ferrer's character of the way he is is interesting and played up decently in the film. Like I said, the film is a three-star film out of a possible four. It's a good movie, but it needs a sequel, really. There's just there's a lot of ideas in the film. Well, a lot of unanswered stuff in the film that's too vague. Uh, I know they're trying to keep some stuff in the shadows, obviously. And maybe they planned a sequel, but it never happened. But I know they're trying to keep some stuff in the shadows on purpose, and it works, but they keep, this is a an example of keeping too much in the shadows. But it's still a good film, and I would definitely buy it, and I definitely recommend watching it if you like vampire films or horror films in general. But it's not a gore fest, but it's entertaining and very suspenseful. And uh, the main character, Miguel Ferrari, is fun to watch the entire film, and he's a lovable asshole. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a good film, and I definitely recommend watching it if you're a horror fan. Uh, so I'll see you guys later until the next review and uh, I hope you have a good day. So peace out.